This is Rocky. Great movie. Great music too. Terrific effort by Sylvester Stallone. Yet, I think it's a great movie not just because of the boxing, but because of the theme. And the theme is that the little guy can take on really huge odds and somehow win through in the end. Maybe the theme of Rocky can be summed up in an old saying. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Or as we say in Australia, it's not the size of the wombat in the fight, but the size of the fight in the wombat. There's another saying, life imitates art. And this means that we can often find real-life stories that match those portrayed in books or movies. In the case of Rocky, there is a real-life parallel, a story of a boxer and his trainer, and it involves an Italian-Australian and a New Zealander. OK, all we're going to do this in the last round against Tui. You must start against this guy. Now remember what I said. As soon as that bell goes, I want you to attack. And don't wait. And don't wait for jamming. Attack. OK, there's Gordiosi's uh, corner. A little bit of a... Uh, uh, well, a, a, a little bit of a message there that uh, they may feel that he could be behind, right? This is the boxer of the story. Vito Gaudiosi was born in Wollongong in 1967. He's been both a title-winning boxer and a decorated police officer in one of the toughest areas of the state. Wollongong is a working-class city built on the coal and steel industries. Outside the town hall, a sculpture of two men, one bare-chested, is intended to represent the spirit of mateship. Although Vito is at the centre of the story, the main character is not the boxer, but the trainer. This man, Father Maury Crocker, born in New Zealand in 1937. He was at Vito's side literally every step and stage of the way. He was a complex and enigmatic character who made a deep impression on everyone he met. He formed a group of street kids into what he called the deranged road runners. But more of that later. Rip, uppercut, yes, good boy, keep the hands up. Twist and turn there. That's it. New South Wales middleweight champion Vito Gordiosi and coach father Crocker hope the national champion Lou Cafaro will take up the challenge. I'd like to challenge him for the Australian title and I know that if I get one crack at it, I'll do my best and I'll get that Australian title. So when you're short with him, you work with him short, see? Bang, 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 bang. Gordiosi put three hours of training in a day. I'm a nuggety, nuggety sort of a bloke, so I should be up fighting, pressing the attack and throwing them short punches like Tyson and like 
uh, Rocky Marciano and all them boys too. Gordiosi's last four fights have been knockouts. They've earned him the title, the miniature Marciona. He was an Italian, same as Vito, and a real power puncher who beat everything that was put in front of him. And now Vito has proving to these fellows that uh, there is a similarity because his last four fights have been knockouts. And he's starting, he does fight a little bit like the original Rocky Marciano. Training young boxers is an unusual hobby for a priest, but one Father Crocker finds worthwhile. I suppose there's a lot of romanticism about boxing. But the real, the real factor of boxing is that it's a very cruel and hard sport and very demanding. And you're looking for a special type of person, you know, that's ready to put their body on the line. In his homemade ring behind St Mary's Church at Berkeley, Father Crocker trains up to six young boxers. He says it gives a lot of young men a purpose in life. But Gordiosi found out there's no glory in boxing. Hit that, that, four times, OK? Right. His name is Father Maury Crocker, and boxing is very much a part of his life. A converted room in the church hall serves as a gymnasium, and while he's no Johnny Lewis, Father Maury's revered in fight circles as one of the better trainers in the business. So I've been to Johnny Lewis's gym, I've been to Jeff Harding's gym, they all train the same as what we do. You know, just, just that they've got the name and we haven't, we've got to establish that name. If Vito had his way, the partnership of Gordiosi and Crocker will be as well known as Fennec and Lewis. The 24-year-old middleweight has had 17 fights for just three losses, and he says he was ripped off in one of those. Next stop, the Australian title. Then he plans to take on the world. What a story. The Italian from Wollongong and the parish priest. But Father Murray's no ordinary priest. He's one of the boys, really. When he's in church, he does his job, but when he's in the gym, he's one of the boys, you know. He's just an average man like everyone else, and he doesn't lecture or make you go to church. He just wants you to box, and that's it. Ask him about one of his boys, and he'll talk his head off. But he's reluctant to talk about himself. A lot of priests have been involved in boxing, you know, as boxers, or uh, a lot of priests have been footballers. A lot of priests, have, Catholic priests, have been sportsmen, you know. Father Murray received a late call to the priesthood. He's a former member of the New Zealand Armed Forces and served in Malaya. He's got a sense of humour that hardly fits a man of the cloth, including favourite ditties from Iron Man Mike Tyson on the wall of the makeshift gym. And it's sometimes difficult to decide which takes precedence, training or church duties. He hasn't got to duck off from training time. Oh, yeah, he's got to duck off many times to run down and do, do his confessions and, and <laughs> do his weddings and baptisms, but he's back in 10 minutes. He's, they love him around here because he's pretty quick in the church. Perhaps the real story behind the priest who became a boxing trainer will emerge only when Vito Gordiosi wins the title. But if it's not Vito, it will undoubtedly be another of the never-ending parade of pugilists attracted to this enigmatic character. Well, Vito, could I ask you what made you go into boxing? Well, um, I think it was just an instinct I had in me as a young person. I was always sort of getting into street fights. and um, back, back in the in the heyday, it was basically um, intimidation against the, the Europeans and the um, and the, the Australians over here. And it was um, it was the word wog that basically um, got me into the in, into the fight game. That's sort of why I continued on, on to becoming an Australian middleweight champion. I was a, a boxer um, and uh, a soldier. I was in the Milan emergency, and then I became a school teacher. But part of that, I was a walk labourer, um, a world traveller, and uh, a priest. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside.
Cordiasi still standing his ground. So Shane Delaney pours some pressure on. That's a bell sounds to end round three. How'd you see that one, Paul? Well, each round's getting closer, but again, I'll have to give that to Vito Gordioso. It's shape, it's a very good fight so far. As we see Shane Delaney getting his instructions from trainer Brian Lavia. There's a long way in this fight to go yet. It's still another seven three-minute rounds to go, and uh, you're still on a chance while you're on your feet. Cordiosi this time scoring with an uppercut. There's a towel. Yeah, Shane Delaney's corner has shot the towel in. Vito was landing some very nice short right hands there. But what a game performance by Shane Delaney.